places our first stop is word on the water and apparently it is and i've just had this from the barge owner himself london's only floating bookshop so here it is really makes people come and look at them but it has to be about the quality of the books and the yeah. when it actually comes down to it, if you're going to come to a bookshop you can be excited about it being on a barge or it having a garden or there being a jazz band but if you don't like the books if the books aren't interesting enough if they're not good enough value you won't buy them and the shop won't won't exist so you've clearly been very careful in your selections you can only fit so many on here as well <laughs> Well, that, yeah, that's the thing that is, is a kind of benefit, really, because it does make us focus on the quality. Yeah, yeah. Well, we didn't mean to buy anything. We're both going away with a book, so that, that, <laughs> you've done your job. Good, that's how it should be. <laughs> Thanks, John. section of Waterstones trying to find um, journals for our novel in November. I'm writing about a girl named Blue so I kind of wanted to go for a blue one so this might be the one for me. Um, still looking though because hopefully there's more. Okay guys so forget the journal I showed you earlier. I found this and it's beautiful and it really fits my story so I'm taking it. I paid a ridiculous amount for it which I'm kind of embarrassed but I love it so there you go. I got this guy, a nice little William Morris design, because my book, The Novel November, is set in a 16th century National Trust house, uh, and there's a bit of time travel going on, and I thought, this kind of looks like, I don't know, that era. It did in my head anyway, so here we go. Now I just need to fill it with stuff. <laughs> Looking forward to looking around though. Mez and I do keep getting distracted. Imagine that. Hello, I'm in Hatchets and uh, I'm here with David on his second day. Uh, very lucky bookseller. Is that your book? Right, bookseller. Bookseller, one of my dream jobs um, here in Hatchets. And David, can you tell us what makes Hatchets such a special bookshop? Well, for one thing, Hatchards is the oldest bookshop in Britain, set up in 1797, and we have been running continuously since then. tea room and I just heard the word free samples so hopefully we'll make it to boils on time cheers
Mystery Chasers! So we had our big hurrah down in London and uh, let's recap what we discovered. So Brie, we were looking for yesterday best writing spot, best reading spot, best chai latte yeah. and bookshop cafe and overall best bookshop experience. So let's start with best reading and writing spot. What was your take? Well, guys, we got there at like, what, five o'clock to seven? Maybe we were a bit late. Eight. We were a bit late. And let me tell you, these places were packed. The cafes were packed. In Foils, London. we had to share a table with like six other people. Right. And so it's not a lot of space. So if you're one of those people who kind of draws energy from other people and that then inspires yes, it's great. you, <laughs> perfect. If you're like more like us, I think both of us, and you yeah. kind of need your zone to get in to write, then probably don't go to a, a London central bookshop. Uh, to work especially yeah. after work yeah like maybe during the work day would have been okay but the they the were packed um it was a nice buzz it was a nice yeah, place it to was... sit and soak in the atmosphere but not a great place to get work done no and well, a little bit of work done though we I'm did a little us. bit it was not easy though because there was not a lot of space to spread yeah. out yeah and kind of elbow your neighbor yes constantly. and know that i knew that the people next to us were talking about art and there was no way to block them out yeah. um learned a few things about art last yes time. did <laughs> But as far as writing goes, yeah, none of them were my ideal. If you, like Mez said, like the energy, go for it. In that case, probably, what was the first place? Waterstones. Waterstones. So yeah, just best. to recap, we started our day at um, the canal near King's Cross and we visited Word on the Water. That was Which, the barge. <laughs> no cafe, no place to write, yeah. no place to read. That was awesome. simply to look at books and it was incredible. Actually, they did have a really nice armchair in front of a wood they stove. They did. In the winter, I want to go back and sit in front of that wood stove with a book. Yes. That would be lovely. But yeah, you can only spend so long on a barge, I suppose, before yeah. you feel like you're sort of living there. <laughs> um, and then we went to... The Big Waterstones. Waterstones Piccadilly. So after Waterstones Piccadilly, we... we went to Hatchards. Hatchards, yes. yes. Also in Regent Street. Um, and would you say that's a good place to write? Uh, if there's not really any place to spread Sorry. out. It's a good place to read, though. It was very quiet. But um, yeah. there's no tables or anything. So if you're just, like, maybe reading a writing book and marking that up, that's a good place. But unless you can sit with the laptop literally on your lap then but it is beautiful it is beautiful oh, and my new love i had no idea it was pretty awesome i've lived in london seven years and i've never been to hatches and i feel like a numpty that i've missed that little gem of london literary london yeah really really pretty yeah so did like that one and then there was then, of course the mega foils yes on tottenham court road and we've already mentioned yeah very crowded cafe yeah it's but, a buzzing place and i didn't really see anywhere else to sit yeah, they've got so. sofas here and there, but not really good workspaces. Um, yeah. So the next co uh, category would be best chai latte, which we which were a bit... only one even had them. Which was foils. Yes, and it was okay, it, but it wasn't the best. It wasn't the, it was the best we had all day. It was yes, it was the only one. But not the best ever. And then no. uh, Waterstones, Piccadilly, didn't even have it, so I got a hot chocolate yeah. instead. And it was good, but I really wanted a chai latte. Yeah, so. yeah. When you've got chai latte on the brain, nothing else will do. Um, but yeah, it was a decent foils. <laughs> and then just in terms of overall favourite bookshop, we haven't actually discussed this. No, we haven't. You go first. Um, hmm. If I'm actually looking for a book to read and just wander around, probably be Hatchards. I did really like that one. I think I'm going to agree. Well, so here's the thing. I mean... For, for mass selection, obviously, you can't beat the mega stores. Um, it's kind of like um, if you've seen You've Got Mail, you know, there's that whole argument, the superstore versus the little independent. And obviously, the superstore is always going to have more selection, you know, the schnazzy cafes, all that, all the bells and whistles. And that's exciting, and we love that. Yes. Don't get us wrong. Oh, yeah. But I think we're both kind of suckers for the independent bookshops. Yes. With lots and lots of character. So, word on the water definitely wins for most original yes definitely. unusual just out of a book sort of bookshop and very very friendly yeah owners. really friendly <laughs> and there was a dog in the barge you can't yes. get better than that um and yeah definitely for kind of most beautiful antiquated historical bookshop hatches yes. hatches was lovely difficult to choose a favorite depends on what you're going for yes definitely 
But we didn't come away from any of those empty-handed, so now we're going no. to show you our booty from our <laughs> day of story chasing. Which, considering how book lovers we are, we did very good to come away with just what we came away with. We took small bags on purpose. Yes. Very wisely. <laughs> know thyself. All right, I'm going to flip this camera around so you can see what we got. 